The National Education Collaboration Trust is planning to host its first math summit in June. This is part of efforts to improve South African learners' performance in mathematics. Let's unpack the story further. We're joined this afternoon by Professor Kirsten Jordan, the Executive Director at the South African Mathematics Foundation, and Cizwe Kassana, Chairperson of the National Education Collaboration Trust. Uh, to both of you, welcome. We've got very long titles. It's great to have you with us here in the studio. Um, Cizwe, I want to begin with you this afternoon to talk about, you know, when we talk mathematics and students are in the middle of exams now, aren't they? For those of them who are at home studying, they're probably shaking in their boots at the thought of mathematics. The subject has a bad rep, I would say, but we have made a lot of strides in the country over the past 20 or so years. That is correct, because especially when you look at uh, the pass rates that uh, the country has shown, uh, especially in no fee paying schools, in mm -hmm. other words, the quintal one, two and three schools, where if you look at just the 2023 results, last year's results, uh, we've seen a significant increase in the number of those learners who are coming from those schools doing well in mathematics, mm. um, especially where you're looking at the pass marks that are required for entry into some of the more, um, uh, let me say, you know, programs that require a lot of uh, high pass marks, mm -hmm. actuarial science, engineering, accounting, medicine, and so on. We've seen quite a significant number of students who are coming from the North Fee Paying Schools who are passing mathematics really well, above 60%, mm. which is a really good thing because. And are we past, talking higher grade mathematics? Well, there is no such or a do thing. We, as know, a, uh, okay. we now have uh, math literacy and right. mathematics. Right, right. So right. in mathematics literacy, we're talking about mathematics now, not math, math, not math literacy. So we're so talking about mathematics. mathematics mm -hmm. yes. So in, in my language, that would be higher grade maths, essentially? Well, it, they're slightly different, but it's fine. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, you, you I'm showing, showing my age. When, when you did your mathematics. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and that's quite an important development. And it shows that, uh, you know, the teaching of mathematics, the access to mathematics, one, is improving. Uh, it also shows that uh, the teaching by teachers in mathematics yeah. and the support that they have from the system and so on are starting to bear fruit. And that's why when you talk about the National Education Collaboration Trust, the NECT, um, it is about mobilizing civil society, teacher unions, uh, organized business to work with the Department of Basic Education to effect improvements in the quality of education mm. in the country across the board. Uh, so we as the NECT cannot lay claim to the improvements, but it is about collaboration and working together in supporting the department in the initiative, but also working with higher education institutions, in other words, universities that train teachers, uh, to become you know, right. teachers that are qualified and specialists in teaching mathematics. All of those things are important in improving the learning outcomes in mathematics and demystifying mathematics. Mm. Um, you talked about it as you know, something where students shake in their boots and so on. It is quite amazing. When you, once you demystify, you have teachers who love mathematics, who really make it come alive. Young people enjoy mathematics and it starts being this ho, -ho that people must run away from and go and do much lit because it's so difficult. Yeah, and, and Professor Yordan, that's, that's, there's no sort of overstating the role of a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. In learning the joy of mathematics, in bringing across the importance of mathematics in a way that is accessible to a learner that might think to themselves, actually, I'm, I'm not very good at maths. Mm. Yes, so there's a lot of work going on in um, trying to improve teacher qualifications, teacher training. Uh, so that's also ongoing partnerships that we have, as I'm talking now from the South African Mathematics Foundation, right. with the uh, Department of Higher Education and Training as well, who's been doing studies on the minimum requirements for uh, teacher education. And the Council for Higher Education is also busy working on that so that we can address issues in terms of teachers not being taught enough subject content during their BA degrees. Yes. Um, especially in the light of the fact that there's this cycle of teachers that have struggled in a system where they haven't necessarily had uh, very good teaching in mathematics or they've done mathematics literacy themselves. Now they go into um, high education and they're training to be teachers and they already have uh, uh, perhaps skills gaps, content knowledge yeah. gaps and how to address those and make sure that as our teachers are being trained at all the different universities that they come out adequately prepared mm. to actually 
face the challenge of having to teach the subject at university. Mm. And because if they're struggling themselves, they won't instill that love for the subject. Yeah, and absolutely. And once they do have that confidence, they can also encourage learners to go into careers where they need mathematics um, because our country desperately needs those kind of skilled people, like Cesar we were saying, yeah. uh, accountants, engineers, actuaries, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, so Prof, I want to stay with you because, you know, when we take a look at our numbers, um, just post-democracy, so, so 1994, mm -hmm. if we take a look at the number of African students out of 400,000 candidates that passed mathematics, 880 of those were African students. Um, and that's with 65% or more. And then fast forward 2023, 22,000 of those students were African students, mm -hmm. passing with a, a pass rate, and this is for maths and physical science, um, with 60% or more. Mm -hmm. So that tells a good story, doesn't it? Yes. So that growth was uh, the first study for the eight, eight, uh, 880 students, uh, learners, was uh, done in the early 2000s. Right. And the 22,000 is now uh, last year's numbers. So that's right, that's learners that get at least 60% or 65% depending on which study you're looking at um, in mathematics. And that usually is a good enough mark to get into uh, degrees. So it's definitely a bachelor pass. Right. And uh, important there is also to look at how many of those learners are actually coming from your no fee schools. So the, what we call quintile one, two and three schools. So not previous Model C schools, mm -hmm. but often rural schools. So we're getting a lot more African learners, especially from rural areas, getting a high enough matric pass that they can actually study degrees. Yeah. And then there's another aspect to it. If you're looking at something like people becoming actuaries or uh, those kind of degrees, um, they need at least a distinction in mathematics. So there's been a big growth in that too. Um, specifically for African learners, the percentage. So in 2019, it was approximately 40, in the 40s, uh, 49%, actually, that's how high it was, of uh, learners, uh, of African learners, were getting um, uh, a distinction. distinctions. And a distinction is 80%. Correct. Right. And uh, now it's already in the 60s. Okay, that, that, that's, that's incredible work. Mm. Should we again unpack for our viewers why it is important for us to work this hard at subjects like mathematics and physical sciences, Cesar? Well, it's important for a number of reasons. Uh, for starters, mathematics makes you understand life it, because you know, it's about teaching you the competences and the skills of problem solving, yeah. of mm -hmm. how you approach things that may be abstract. In other words, things that may, be, may, may appear to be complicated, but once you go through the processes, the thinking process, the logical thinking process of solving problems, you actually apply that skill in your daily life. You know, I love, I love listening to people who love maths, talk about maths, because yeah. it's so unreachable for me um, as someone who didn't do very well uh, at higher grade maths in, in high school. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you this story. Ago. You know, I, I, I'm a teacher, right? Yes. And uh, we do not do math literacy in our schools. We, don't, we do mathematics only. Right. And often we get people like you, Michelle, who say, no, you know, I was never good at maths and so on. Sometimes it's about the conversations that we have with ourselves mm. or that things that we get told mm. that you can't do mathematics. But actually, when you have a teacher, an educator who says, no, actually, every child can do mathematics, and you start the building blocks, you know, from preschool already, uh, just uh, the love of counting, the mm. love of using examples, in, in just everyday life. You know, I'll tell you just my own personal story. Just to demystify mathematics, my name, my surname is Nasana. So my dad sort of understood this thing of demystifying mathematics and actually called mathematics mathematics. So <laughs> I related to it as something that is mine, right? Is something that I just know. I just know It belongs to you. It belongs to me. And it's amazing what that did to wow. my mindset about mathematics. So if you have teachers like that, that just tell every child that actually you can count. Because if we tell ourselves, and sometimes we have authority, people in authority, 
uh, that may be whatever in senior positions in government or business and so on say exactly the same thing that you're saying that oh i was never good at math yeah. then it becomes cool not to be good at math mm. yes it's true mm. it becomes mm. cool not to be good at math and everybody says ah oh, yeah, actually all of us in one room and we laugh about it and we think it's funny whereas actually all of us can know and love mathematics mm -hmm. And you're inspiring me now. Is it too late for me to it's go not. back? <laughs> I'm doing a PhD now, and I'm probably three times older than you are. Oh, gosh. Right? So learning never stops. Yeah. It never stops yeah. because you know, yeah. acquisition of knowledge, being inquisitive, and just inquiring about you know, what the world is and how the world works, we all should be doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, you're inspiring me. Careful, I might not be at newsroom for much longer <laughs> if you continue. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you, uh, Professor Yordan, about um, you know, making, making certain university degrees more accessible for people who might not be achieving, for example, a distinction in mathematics. Mm -hmm. Do we have the bridging courses that are available for me to do that kind of course and then get into a course for actuarial science, for example? I think most of the universities do have those kind of bridging courses. And there is work being done also with having um, uh, bridging courses um, uh, with a more national system um, where you can improve your qualification at school level right. um, to get into those degrees. But um, I think the key to more long term is uh, touching on what Cizwe was also saying. So there's a lot of work being done in um, changing our way we teach mathematics. There's a new framework from the Department of Basic Education that the Mass Foundation was one of the role players mm. involved in developing this, which focuses on uh, teaching for understanding. So a lot of the teaching that goes on in the classroom focuses on, well, this is the recipe right. that you have to use to solve this kind of problems. And, and, and the learners don't really understand exactly why that recipe works or why that recipe should be used in that situation, etc. But if you can change uh, to think about any kind of mathematical problem as just simply a problem that needs to be solved, so it's a critical thinking skill, a problem-solving skill that you can take into your life with any discipline. Mm. It's not just for mathematics. Uh, that you understand the basis of the question mm. and then approach each question on its own and learn how to solve yeah. that. Yeah. And that's the focus is changing towards that. So it's not about a new curriculum or... Um, I mean, there's work being done to strengthen the curriculum, but it's about changing how teachers teach the mathematics. Yeah. And, and actually, I see it, now that you mention it, I see it in my grade mm. two son, in the way that mm. he solves mathematics problems mm. in ways that, you know, mm. that, that blow my mind as well. To both of our guests, let me thank you for coming into studio. Professor Kirsten Yordan is with the South African Mathematics Foundation, and Cizwe Kwasana is the chairperson of the National Education Collaboration Trust, talking to us about the joys of, what is it? Mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for coming into the studio.